got the blue lights. Let's find the Titanic. Hello and welcome back. Before it leaves for its VIP home, I'd like to show you all in great detail uh, what me and Attila did for Luka Doncic's build. So we'll have a look through all of the EK parts used, how we used them, how we configured the loops, what modifications we made, and just what hardware is inside. So firstly, and most obviously, we're using the Lian Li V3000 Plus in white for this build. So it's the GGF edition. Mods to the case wise, we uh, rebuilt the internals and left the externals pretty much alone uh, except for the UV printing and the uh, frosted stickers that we put onto both of the glass panels. Inside hardware, we have an Asus Republic of Gamers Z790 Apex. Uh, inside is an Intel i9-13900K. Two sticks of G-Skill Trident Z5. I think they're 32 gigabyte sticks, so we have uh, high capacity in here still. For storage, we have a two terabyte drive. Uh, it's, a, it's a Seagate Fire Cuda in the primary slot. For graphics, we have a Republic of Gamers RTX 4090 Strix. That pretty much sums up the main build with exception of the power supply, which you can't see because it's in the back. That's uh, also an Asus Republic of Gamers Thor 1200 watt. The EK parts we have on the main build are the white edition Velocity 2 and Vector 2 blocks. On the CPU, we use the contact frame upgrade kit that we have from our Debauer collaboration just to improve the, the long-term thermals and be sure that the, uh, the IHS doesn't fatigue over time. The GPU has uh, the Vector 2 Strix white edition, which has the white Acidel pieces as well as a white terminal and a silver backplate. It's mounted on a white loop uh, PCIe riser bracket that we customized for this. Uh, although the case by default has uh, the little sticks across between every PCIe slot, we we cut them out and used the non-shifted version, so uh, the GPU sits nicely in front of the motherboard. Uh, we chose to place it as low down as we could, so it's it's in slots three to eight, and, and that really pushes it out of the way of the CPU socket, so you still get uh, a nice view into the, into the heart of the build. For cooling on that loop, we have a P480M uh, in white at the top, and a uh, quantum surface S480, also in white, at the bottom. Each is equipped with four loop FPT fans, uh, the white DRGB versions. So everything, you know, immediately we're off to a good start with all of these white parts, and it's, it's very on theme. Uh, but just to, to retain the theme that we're going for, um, it's so it's inspired by uh, the new shoe that, that Luka Doncic was, was debuting uh, at Bled at the event that we took it to. Uh, so we have these blue accents, mostly blue coolant, blue sleeving, and very, very fine uh, bright red accents. So we used the uh, torque fittings with blue compression rings and red accent rings on satin titanium bases, and all of the road trees uh, are satin titanium, so it'll blends in very nicely with the white parts, which are mostly white and silver. Now, the interesting part, uh, the newest part in this build that you've not seen before on camera are the distribution plates. So these are the second Quantum X project after the PS5, which has actually made it to market. So these will be available to buy very soon. They're extremely interesting and very versatile. So they were perfect for this project for us to try them for the first time. Uh, while we do have a Reflection 2 distro plate made for this case, we wanted to use it in its rotated format. We also wanted to fit the PS5, which we'll come to. Uh, because it was all twisted, we couldn't fit the, the conventional distribution plate. You know, normally it fits up front. Uh, obviously it wouldn't fit sideways at the top in the same way. So these actually mount on any 280 millimeter uh, radiator or fan mounting and they allow you to build any internal pattern of distribution plate that you want. They have, by default, uh, a D5 pump installed with a convection cover. 
So really nice, the, these ones we changed to the silver covers. We will have a silver and a black version, so it'll either be silver and silver or black and black. But for now, we're using the very first samples, so the, the silver and black. How, how you use these in a loop is uh, first you build up all the fittings of the system. And you can see there's just hundreds of holes, not literally hundreds, but 36 holes, something like that, on the front of this plate. And you can practically use any of them for inlets or outlets. The first four down here, immediately after the pump, have to be an outlet. After that, it's up to you how you configure them. So you first place the fittings, so the, the, the 14s, the HDC 14s, or the rotaries, or whatever, on the distro plate. So uh, as we plan this out, we put the CPU block in, put the GPU block in, radiator and saw which ones line up in the most convenient way that they wouldn't cross over. We got the loop order correct and you know made a mental note of which one will be an inlet, which will be an outlet and what order we wanted them to come in. Then we just put all the fittings on, took the distro plates back out, uh, split them in half, you take off the lid uh, and then install on the inside another set of fittings. So you have to use Torque Micro because it's obviously not so big inside that you could use a full-size torque fitting. Uh, we use torque micro with satin titanium loop tube, uh, that's 1012. So we used torque H micro HDP 12 millimeter push-in fittings for the inside. So they look really clean and they're really small. And then you put the rear cover back on with its lid back on, sandwich it all together, put it back in the build, and now it's gone from being just a pump reservoir to actual uh, distribution between all the parts that you connected earlier. So with that done, then when it comes to fill it up, you fill up the space on the outside. So everywhere between the tubes gets filled with coolant and that becomes your reservoir and you can see all the tubes on the inside. So they'll be coming to the shop very soon, if not even by the time this video comes out. That pretty much completes our loop. Uh, you can see these two sets of fittings go down to the basement, we'll check under there afterwards, uh, but it's just ZMT underneath and a conventional pass-through fitting. For the use of this build, because we were going so fast, uh, we had to modify these a little bit. We put them in the lathe and turned off the inside just to make this line up. Because we built the rear panel for the case with just uh, straight mounting holes, so it was really neat from the back, you'll see it from the back. Uh, the, the window lines up with the distribution plate's original hole. Because we built it in that way, we couldn't move this, we couldn't move the motherboard, uh, and we couldn't adjust the whole thing just to make these line up, but they were coming out like two millimeters too high, so we shortened the pass-through fittings. It was the easiest to, to shorten, and you wouldn't notice. You, we weren't like removing any plating, uh, and they sit back down and tighten up just the same, so we got away with that. Uh, did the same at the front end and ended up with a flawless finish. Uh, exactly why it didn't fit, we're not sure. Probably just layering this up in, uh, in real life, things don't sit quite as flat and as close as you expect when we, when we measured it in CAD. And that brings us to the front loop. So at the front, we have the new Quantum X uh, block for the PS5. That's pretty much like an active backplate. So there's there's two layers to it. There, there's a back layer which cools the SSD and the memory and the VRM of the PlayStation. And the front half cools the, the APU and the part of the SSD that's on the front side and they come together uh, and they have a little terminal spacer between them just like an active backplate and just two tubes link them on the front. So again, at the front, we use the perfectly symmetrical uh, Quantum X distribution plate and there are just two tubes there and um, because we didn't need so much surface area on the radiator for the front build uh, they just drop down and they go to a simple uh, Quantum S140 that's against the front panel. There is a kind of confusing little extra link and tube on that front distribution plate and that's just because we wanted to raise the return coolant so the return coolant comes from the left port of the PS5 block. Uh, this, this loop order is basically the pump goes out directly to the radiator in the bottom, comes back up and into the PS5 block. 
and where it would return, because it's so low, we won't go in up to a GPU block or another radiator. It's really low in the reservoir and it's very close to the pump. So we didn't want air to continuously circulate through the pump. So we made an internal tube and an external tube just to get some more fittings inside to raise the return level of the coolant and help keep air out of the loop. I think I've covered everything on the front side besides our custom cables. So they are made with all MDPCX supplies. They are triple X white, code red, golf blue, and some of them have grand blue sleeving as well. The PlayStation end has more dark blue and the PC end has more golf blue to match the two coolant colors used. Uh, the front loop has cryofuel navy blue and the back loop has a kind of custom mixture of clear coolant, uh, mystic fog and blue dye to make this very interesting light blue semi-transparent coolant. It looks almost like mystic fog with the lights on and with the lights off it looks really good in the distro plate and, and matches the kind of uh, Alcantara feeling fabric that's used in Luca's shoe design. So let's take a fast look at the back too. So here we are on the back side of the case. You can see all of the cables, a tiny bit of the mess, but uh, fundamentally we wanted to keep it so that it can still be upgraded. It can still be modified. We don't know what the lifespan or the life of this PC is exactly gonna be like. Uh, since it's not one of our own builds, we didn't wanna go so custom that it was intimidating to work on or intimidating to change things. So cables are kept very simple. They, they retain the original rubber grommets from the case, even though you can see these are custom panels behind the original motherboard tray. We just wanted to keep it that it could be worked on no problem. On the upper half, luckily it was mostly white cables. They blend in really nice, don't stand out too bad and uh, when they're covered with the frosted vinyl applied to the rear glass, actually looks pretty good. Uh, there's obviously no loop to see up there, just, just our management of things. Our Omnilink cables, again, making things a bit simpler with only one cable coming down from the top radiator and you know one cable from the front, one cable from the backmost radiator. As you can see though, well, we do have essentially two builds in the front. We have the PlayStation and we have the PC. We only have one power supply. So this was a bit of a debate during the build in do we set this up with two power supplies? The advantage there would be that the PlayStation can run on its own. So you could not have the PC on and still just run this build, but then you need kind of a latching switch to turn on its power supply. Um, and its loop would only run its lights would only run when its power supply is on and you wouldn't be able to control them with the PC. So we felt this way around is much simpler, more straightforward to understand. And the PS5 is basically plugged in as an additional, uh, as you can see, an additional graphics card. So it has PCIe power connectors and it's just plugged in directly to the PSU. The pump for the PS5, the fan for the DS5, all the lights, DS5? It's not a Citroen. <laughs> uh, the pump for the PS5, the lights for the DS5, uh, the pump for the PS5, the lights for the PS5, and of course the fan for the PS5 are all just plugged into the main PC. So with the motherboard, with software on the motherboard, you can control the speeds, you can control the lights, and everything will be synced with what the PC is doing. Uh, in this way, the, the disadvantage is that you have to turn on the PC to use the PS5. But the good thing is that means both loops are running, it all looks nice, it's all uh, lit the same way. Uh, and it's a bit more convenient to manage things in the back. If we'd have had a second power supply, then that's yet another thing you need to use an extension cable for. And it will kind of get in the way of the view of all the cables which are plugged into the IO. And that's perhaps where this build isn't the neatest in the basement because we didn't want to block off uh, all this IO. So the IO for the PlayStation is up here, the IO for the graphics card is in the middle, and the IO for the motherboard is at the back. So if you want to attach any kind of cable uh, beyond the ones on the front panel of the case, uh, you need to just unclip the 
pedestal side plate, thread the cable through to grommet at the back and actually find it to plug it in. So that's why everything's left kind of loose that you can just move it, have a look, plug it in. We didn't have any, any issues and everything's secure and safe and nice. The loop uh, of what you can see in the bottom from those two pass-throughs at the front, which come from the PS5's distribution plate, there are just two simple tubes to the front radiator, which is just an S140, but that's more than enough for the PlayStation, because it's only like just over 200 watts. And the S480 along the front also again has two ZMTs up to the pass-throughs, which link up to the distribution plate for the PC. So we have really nice cooling, it runs really quiet, um, no problems at all. Uh, the power supply also being a 1200 watt has more than enough power for both systems to run at full load at the same time. One nice thing about the I.O. is of course the primary system and the primary power button turn on the main system. Once the PC is on, the PS5 can then simply be turned on with its controller. And we also extended the secondary system USB 3.1 ports from the I.O. of the case uh, down through into the backside I.O. of the PlayStation 5. So you don't have to go through the build to charge a controller or to plug in a, a memory stick to the, to the PS5. Uh, everything can just be done with the standard I.O. But the secondary system power button can't turn on the PS5 because the PS5 is built to have uh, a continuously on power supply to support the function of turning on with a controlly boy. But I dropped a bit, sorry Luca, sorry PS5. And there we go. I think you saw absolutely every detail of the build through all of that. And if you aren't sure what fittings you need, um, about 200 micro plugs, a thousand different combinations of HDC to get the right uh, the right thing and no, but really we also don't know because we just requested a million times too many of all the fittings and then We'll have to count what was left over uh, It was a really fun build to work on and it was pretty impressive even for me doing it that we pulled off So much custom stuff in such a short space of time uh, It's excellent with both the new PS5 block and the new Quantum X distribution plates uh, Working together. It's really nice to see I really hope that Luca enjoys this build. It was very fun to make it, and I hope he can also maybe one day enjoy working on it, enjoy playing with it, or at least, uh, you know, a cheeky upgrade when the next generation of graphics cards come along. Uh, it's certainly a great platform, and no doubt it will serve him for a long time. Thanks for having a look. If you have any questions, drop them down below, and I'll try and answer them if I miss something. Otherwise, See you in the next build.